DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to this week's PV Tech newscast coming up. First solar to manufacture copper-based crystalline silicon solar cells. Venture capital solar investments slump amid boom for lease companies. And the UK adds 350 megawatt in Q1 2013. First Solar has rocked the solar industry with the acquisition of US-based monocrystalline startup Tetrasun. Having exited research and development into competitive SIGS thin film technology and rejuvenated its commitment to CADTEL technology, the leading thin film and PV project developer plans to start tentative production of Tetrasun's copper-based N-type monocrystalline cells in the second half of 2014. First Solar have not said what the capital investment would be, where the solar cells would be produced, or what the initial nameplate production capacity would be, but the company already has a vacant production plant in Arizona. One of its aims with the acquisition is to distribute the technology in Japan, based on ongoing discussions with Tetrasun's majority shareholder, JX Nippon Oil and Energy. The acquisition really sends a signal to First Solar's main rival in the US market, SunPower, that it plans to compete directly with like-for-like -like technology in both the ground-mounted and residential rooftop markets. CEO of Tetrasun, Dennis DeCousta, spent 12 years at SunPower, which included a spell as Director of Solar Cell Research and Development. First Solar also guided total module shipments to be between 1.6 and 1.8 gigawatts in 2013, and net sales of between 3.8 and 4 billion US dollars. Last year, they reported net sales of 3.4 billion US dollars. In a boost to equipment suppliers, First Solar will allocate between 350 and 400 million US in capital expenditures this year. The majority of competitors have lowered spending to maintenance levels. First Solar has also made a significant leap in total area module efficiency that's been verified by the US Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Easily surpassing its previous record of 14.4% efficiency, First Solar has pushed the bar to 16.1%. Importantly, the CADTEL thin film leader also set a record for open circuit voltage, reaching an NREL verified 903.2 millivolts. According to the company, the record is the first substantial improvement in CADTEL-based VOC in over a decade of research work across the globe. Recently, First Solar set a new world record for CADTEL solar cell efficiency of 18.7%. Mercom Capital's recent solar funding and mergers and acquisition report found that only $126 million was invested in solar in the first quarter of 2013, compared with $220 million last quarter and $324 million in the first quarter of 2011. This is the second lowest quarter for VC funding since 2008. The likes of overcapacity, companies going out of business and thin film firms struggling are making venture capitalists very cautious. Although deal flow remained steady at 26 in the first quarter versus 27 deals in Q4 2012, the average deal value was 4.9 million US dollars for the quarter. Once again, it's the downstream where there are some bright spots, including funding for solar lease companies One Roof Energy and Sungevity in the US. In line with positive predictions for the UK solar industry, the country has completed at least 350 megawatts of solar installations in the first quarter of this year. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, this includes a record number of large ground-mounted PV projects, which were able to take advantage of higher incentive rates before cuts came into effect on April the 1st. Interestingly, Germany-based solar developer IB Vot has planned a joint venture with Chinese solar manufacturer Hanwha Solar One to complete two new large-scale solar projects in the UK. However, the UK industry has raised concerns that the recent mandatory registration of Chinese solar products 
has caused the price of modules to rise to a level that's financially untenable for ROC-funded projects. According to BNEF, the UK added about 800 megawatt of PV in 2012. Most of this came from rooftop PV systems. And finally, market research firm IHS has released a new forecast for the photovoltaics industry that is more bullish about global installations in 2013 than many others. IHS is forecasting another year of double-digit growth, with installations topping 35 gigawatt. Asia is expected to become the largest region for PV installations for the first time in 10 years, with around 15 gigawatt of installations in 2013. In contrast, European demand is expected to be around 13 gigawatt this year. Bright spots in Europe are the UK, Turkey and the Netherlands, yet overall the decline is broad-based. In emerging markets, small installation growth rates of 250%, 50% and 65% are forecast for Middle East and Africa, Americas and Asia respectively. Well, that's all we've got time for in this week's PV Tech Newscast. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon.